Hello, my name is Roisin and welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I thought I would talk about two of the prize long lists in which I am interested. We've got the International Booker Prize long list and the Women's Prize long list, uh, both of which are prizes I have been interested in before. I've read the Women's Prize shortlist um, a few times on this channel. So I'll leave in the cards above a playlist of all the videos where I talk about prize lists. I'm also not gonna talk about every single book on both lists because that would mean talking about 29 books um, and I don't necessarily have thoughts about every single book so I've just got the ones I have thoughts about but I will of course leave linked in the description um, where you can go and read for yourself about the shortlist. I'm going to start with the International Booker because I think that that's the one that will be announced first. The first one I noticed on this list was The Gospel According to the New World by Maurice Condé. Maurice Condé is an author from Guadalupe and I read her book Segu um, I think in a vlog so I will leave in the cards above the vlog if I can find it um, and so that's why I was drawn to this one it's the only one on the long list that I have ever read a work from the author before and I really enjoyed Seiki um, it wasn't a perfect book for me but it was definitely one that I enjoyed and so I'd be interested in reading more of her work even though I've not actually heard of this one before it's been translated from the French by Richard Philcox baby Pascal is strikingly beautiful brown in complexion with grey green eyes like the sea but where does he come from is he really the child of God so goes the rumour, and many signs throughout his life will cause this theory to gain ground. From journey to journey, and from one community to another, Pascal sets off in search of his origins, trying to understand the meaning of his mission. Will he be able to change the fate of humanity? And what will the new world gospel reveal? So we've got a chosen one narrative, messiah narrative as well, so we're also Segu, um, the other Maurice Condé book that I've read, involved a lot of people travelling around um, and trying to dis and like the world around them changing um, and I did enjoy the way that she explored the world so I am interested in seeing how she does so in this one. I'm more likely to read it if it makes it to the shortlist but it's one that I am interested in regardless. Another one that stood out to me was Whale by Chong Myon Kwan. It's been published by Europa Editions which is a publisher that I have enjoyed a lot of the works that I have read from and it is also by a South Korean writer um, and I have had I'm interested in reading more from South Korea. I did read for Koreadathon last year, which I will leave linked in the cards above as well. Um, and this is translated from the Korean by Chi Young Kim. And all, But as well as that, the um, synopsis also sounded really interesting to me. Set in a remote village in South Korea, it follows the lives of three linked characters. Gwonbok, who is an extremely ambitious woman who has been chasing an indescribable thrill ever since she first saw a whale crest the ocean. Her mute daughter, Chun Hee, who communicates with elephants, and a one-eyed woman who controls honeybees with a whistle. So it sounds a bit strange and um, surreal and kind of slightly whimsical, which is something that I enjoy reading. Um, but it has been described as brimming with surprise and wicked humour from one of the most original voices from South Korea. One that I think I have seen on Bookstagram, and that's why it stood out to me, was Standing Heavy by Gauss, which has been translated by Frank Wynn. And this one is from the Côte d'Ivoire. And again, on, as you may know if you're on this channel, that I read a fair amount of African fiction often find what is translated into English published in the UK from um, Africa, from various different countries in Africa is uh, of interest. And Gauss is also a journalist and so I'm interested in seeing how that style of writing is brought to this novel. Amid amidst the political bickering of the inhabitants of the residence for students from the Côte d'Ivoire and the ever-changing landscape of French immigration policy, two generations of Ivorians attempt to make their way as undocumented workers, taking shifts as security guards at a flower mill. It's described as very satirical and um, Glory by No Violet Bulawayo, which I will talk about later in this video, is a satirical novel that I enjoyed, but The Trees by Percival Everett is a satirical novel that I didn't enjoy, both of which were shortlisted for the Booker Prize, not the international one, last year. Um, so I, I am kind of dipping my toe towards satire lately, um, if that's a phrase, and uh, so I'm intrigued for that reason as well. Another one that I have seen on Bookstagram is Time Shelter by Georgios Bodinov, um, which was translated by Angela Roddell. And so I've seen this one all over Bookstagram and also it sounds really interesting. It's like a really interesting concept. It's very much, sounds like it's more of a concept based book than a like character or plot focused book. And I do quite enjoy those. An unnamed narrator is tasked with collecting flotsam and jetsam from the past, from 60s furniture to 40 shirt buttons and scents, and even afternoon light. But as the rooms become more convincing, an increasing number of healthy people seek out the clinic as a time shelter, hoping to escape the horrors of modern life. A development that results in an unexpected conundrum when the past begins to invade the present. Georgi Gospodinov is a Bulgarian writer, and it just sounds so interesting, slightly surreal, a bit of a weird book. Um, 
And actually, something that I did do in libraries was this Alzheimer's treatment um, or Alzheimer's therapy where you get a bo box of, um, they were called reminiscence boxes in the library and they have all this stuff from a certain time period, which is obviously related to this book. Although here in this book, um, it includes things like Afternoon Sunlight. One that I really didn't think I would be interested in, um, but when I read the synopsis, I was, is Jimi Hen Hendrix Live in Lviv by Andrei Kirchhoff. Obviously I'm like, familiar with Jimi Hendrix and things, but I haven't tended to enjoy music in fiction that much when I have read it in the past. Um, and the cover of this didn't really speak to me. But when I read the synopsis, it had that kind of weird, surreal, slightly strange thing that I do look for in books. Strange things are afoot in the cosmopolitan city of Lviv, Western Ukraine. Seagulls are circling and the air smells salty, though Lviv is a long way from the sea. A ragtag group gathers around a mysterious grave in Lychkiv Cemetery, among them an ex-KJB officer and an ageing hippie he used to spy on. Before long, Captain Ryabstev and Alec Olisevich, Olisevich team up to discover the source of the anomalies. Meanwhile, T Taras, who makes a living driving kidney stone patients over cobblestones in his ancient Opal Vetra, is courting Darker, who works nights at a bureau de change despite being allergic to money. The young lovers don't know it, but their fate depends on two lonely old men, relics of another era, who will stop at nothing to save their city. And it says it's shot through with a unique brand of black humour and vodka fueled magical realism, which sounds like my thing. I'm really enjoying darkly funny, magically realist books. There are three Fitzcarraldo books uh, long listed for the booker, uh, the international booker, and um, I think that's quite unusual. I don't think any, any of the other publishers are shortlisted that, long listed that often. But the problem that I have with Fitzcarraldo books is that often, if I, I recognise if I've seen a book somewhere based on its cover and obviously all the Fitzcarraldo books look the same so the likelihood of me recognising that I've seen this Fitzcarraldo book before is much lower um, than in, with the other books um, but the only one that I've really seen felt myself interested in was The Birthday Party by Laurent Mauvigny which was translated by Daniel Levin Becker. I think the other two um, Fitzcarraldo books and two of the other books that I'm not talking about all were related to motherhood. Motherhood seems to be a big theme on this list and it's not something I particularly care about reading about um, and so yeah I've been that's one of the things that I have has maybe turned me off some of the books on this long list. Um, I don't think I've really read many books about motherhood that have supremely interested me and it feels like it is often walking over the same ground but this one is not that. Buried deep in rural France, little remains of the isolated hamlet of the three lone girls, save a few houses and a curiously assembled quartet. Patrice Bergon, inheritor of his family farm, his wife Marion, their daughter Ida and their neighbour Christine, an artist. While Patrice plans a surprise for his wife's 40th birthday, inexplicable events start to disrupt the hamlet's quiet existence. Anonymous menacing letters, an unfamiliar car rolling up the driveway, and as night falls, strangers stalk the houses, unleashing a nightmarish chain of events. Again, dark and weird, um, which is all that I want sometimes. <laughs> and then the final one is set during China's Cultural Revolution, which is a period of history in which I have been interested in still ever since I read uh, Do Not Say We Have Nothing by Madeleine Tien, which is a book that I absolutely loved. This one is called Ninth Building by Zhu Jingzhi, uh, and it's been translated by Jeremy Tiang. Revisiting his experiences as a boy in Beijing and then as a teenager exiled to the countryside, Zhu captures a side of the cultural revolution that is seldom talked about, the sheer tedium and waste of young life under the regime, as well as the gallows humour that accompanies such desperate situations. So it sounds like this is an autofiction kind of a novel, um, but as I said, it's the time period, the history, that really interests me. So there were fewer on the international booker list that I was already familiar with and I think that makes sense um, considering works in translation are not as like publicised or as well recognised in the UK as books that were published in English and the Women's Prize is for books that are published in English. I made a video where I predicted some of the books that I thought would be on the long list, which I will leave in the cards above. And I have one, two, three, three that I listed that made it onto that. The first one is Cursed Bread by Sophie McIntosh. And I have since been seeing reviews of this pop up on Bookstagram. And it's all sounding really interesting to me. It's historical fiction, which I love. And it's one that I talked about in my anticipated releases as well. Elodie, a baker's wife who is plain, unremarkable and ignored. One day, a charismatic new couple appear in town and Elodie quickly falls under their spell. All summer long, she stalks them through the shining streets, inviting herself into their home. 
Meanwhile, beneath the tranquil surface of daily life, strange things are happening. Six horses are found dead in a sun-drenched field. Widows see their husbands walking spectral up the moonlit river. A teenage boy throws himself into the bonfire at Midsummer Feast. And so it doesn't say anywhere in the synopsis that it's a historical fiction, but in some of the reviews that I read, it is based on a real life story of mass hysteria in the 1950s. I believe that was this book. And um, so that just sounds really interesting to me. Mass hysteria is a very strange phenomenon um, and one that I think could make for a really interesting book. I also predicted The Marriage Portrait by Maggie O'Farrell. Uh, if you have one or been longlisted for before, you can automatically be put through without it counting for your publisher's number of books that they can put in, I believe. So Maggie O'Farrell having won a few years ago with Hamnet, um, she's more likely to be on the list for that reason. Um, and this is another historical fiction set in a similar time period, um, but this one is set in Italy. And it is also one that's like been a big publishing, there's been a lot of noise about it, although the reviews haven't been as great. Winter 1561. Lucretia, Duchess of Ferrara, is taken on an unexpected visit to a country villa by her husband Alfonso. As they sit down to dinner, it occurs to Lucretia that Alfonso has a sinister purpose in bringing her here. He intends to kill her. She is 16 years old and has led a sheltered life, locked away inside Florence's grandest palazzo. Here in this remote villa, she is entirely at the mercy of her increasingly erratic husband. So it, it does sound strange and dark and historical like I like, but I said, as I said, I'm feeling a bit unsure about this one because the reviews haven't been, haven't been as good as they were for Hamlet. One that I have already read is Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver um, and this book in my review I said it's probably going to be one of my favourite books of the year. I absolutely fell in love with this book. If I do read the shortlist the other books would have to do really well to live up to Demon Copperhead. It is based on David Copperfield and it follows the same plot points as David Copperfield but instead of being set in the 19th century in London it is set in the late 20th early 21st century so the 90s and early 2000s in Appalachia. Uh, which is where Barbara Kingsolver is from and it follows Demon Copperhead who is a young boy who is um, growing up in rural poverty. There is a lot about the ways that poverty affects people and grinds them down about um, opioid, the opioid crisis and addiction, uh, domestic abuse and the ways that people feel trapped, um, the ways that the education system doesn't necessarily help people and it's a lot of resonances with the themes of David Copperfield because they are um, it's showing how little things have changed in a lot of ways and it's very, it's written almost in dialect it has very like specific voice and a specific feeling of place um, which I really really loved as well. And then one that I didn't put on my personal long list but I did put on my personal long list I think for the booker last year um, is Trespasses by Louise Kennedy so it's definitely one that I've talked about before. Uh, Louise Kennedy is an Irish writer and I've been meaning to read more Irish writers um, and I think I don't like the cover of this one. I feel like it, it lets it down, but then I haven't read the book, so maybe it is fitting. There is nothing special about the day Kushler meets Michael, a married man from Belfast, in the pub owned by her family. But here, love is never far from violence, and this encounter will change both of their lives forever. As people get up each morning and go to work, school, church, or the pub, the daily news rolls off, rolls in of another car bomb exploded, another man beaten, killed, or left for dead. In the class Kushler teaches, the vocabulary of seven-year-old children now includes phrases like petrol bomb and rubber bullets. She is forced to tread lines she never thought she would cross. Tensions in the town are escalating, threatening to destroy all she is working hard to hold together. So it doesn't say what time period this is in. It's obviously during the Troubles, but it doesn't say whether it's like the 70s or the 90s. But I have been wanting to read more Troubles fiction because, as you may know, my mum is from Derry, um, so it is part of my family history. There were also some that were on my anticipated releases, um, so there were books that I was interested in. So we have Children of Paradise, which is set in a cinema, um, squashed into the ground floor of a block of flats, about a woman who works there and avoids the often belligerent owner Iris and is ignored by her loof but tight-knit colleagues who seem as much as part of the building as its fraying carpets and endless dirt. So when she finally gains the trust of this cryptic bands of oddballs, ho odd Holly transforms from the silent drudge to a rebellious insider and gradually she too becomes part of the paradise, unearthing its secrets, learning its history and haunting its corridors after hours with the other ushers. It is no surprise when violence strikes, tempers change and the group 
starts to rapidly grow, go awry. Um, so I've heard, again, I've seen reviews of this one on Bookstagram and it sounds super interesting and I think well done. So I'm looking forward to trying this one out. The Bandit Queens by Perini Shroff is also one that I um, was interested in before about a woman who is widow until the other women in her village decide they want to be widows too. Gita is believed to have killed her husband, a rumour she hasn't bothered to correct because a reputation like that can keep a, woman, a single woman safe in rural India. But when she's approached for help in ridding another's wife of an abusive drunk husband, her reluctant agreement sets in motion a change of events that will change the lives of the women in the village forever. Yes, yes, we know. Chain of events that change the lives of the characters is, seems to be a staple of synopsis for books like these. Um, but I am interested in this one. I do want to read more books set in India as well. That's another um, thing that I haven't read as much of as I would like to. Then one that is interesting to me um, because I hate the colour. I never would have read this book. I, it's called Pod by Lalini Lelani Paul. Lalina Paul? I can't remember how to say that, sorry. It looks, it's about dolphins. It's about a pod of dolphins. And whilst I did have a brief period of reading a lot of books about dolphins when I was about six or seven years old, I believe that's how old I was, maybe eight, um, I was really into those dolphin books back then. See if I can find a picture of the ones that I mean. That it's definitely not a uh, something that I'm interested in now. However, Lena Norms recently made a video about book covers that don't do justice to the books and she said that this was one of them and that she really enjoyed reading this book. It was about climate change, it was really thoughtful and very interesting. Um, I will leave that video linked in the cards above and she made me really intrigued to read it. A dolphin that suffers from a type of deafness that means she cannot master the spinning rituals that unite her pod of spinner dolphins. When tragedy strikes her family and Ia feels like she is partly to blame, she decides to make the ultimate sacrifice and leave. As she ventures into the vast, she discovers dangers everywhere, from lurking predators to strange objects in the water. But just as she is coming to terms with her solitude, a, a chance encounter with a group of arrogant, arrogant botto, bottle noses will irrevocably alter the course of her life. Again, the way they wrote blurbs. So it sounds like something I would have no interest in, and it kind of reminds me of The Bees. Was that her as well? Who was The Bees by? Yes, The Bees was by her as well, which is a dystopia set in a colony of bees. So she obviously likes writing about animals. Um, and I haven't read The Bees, but it was one that was very popular among book groups in um, the library when I worked in the library. Then we have Stone Blind by Natalie Haynes, of course. Greek myth retellings have been having a moment for the past five to seven years, and Natalie Haynes is one of the big people of, of, uh, of that. She had wrote A Thousand Ships, which was also long-listed, shortlisted for the Women's Prize, but I didn't like. Um, I've never found a Greek myth retelling particularly compelling, and I particularly don't like Natalie Haynes' writing. I think that her um, her dialogue is cheesy and um, I just don't think she's a particularly strong writer um, even though she is a very strong like academic like she obviously knows the subject matter well I just don't like her style at all um, but this one is about Medusa which is an interesting story to tell but um, yeah I just thought I'd mention it because obviously I recognise Natalie Haynes as a writer but this is the sort of thing that makes me less inclined to want to read the shortlist because I have absolutely like I actively don't want to read this book um, I don't like the writer I don't like the subject matter I have a classics degree, so I do like the subject matter, but I don't like these books. I don't like these books. I saw a post on Instagram the other day that said Greek myth retellings are inherently Tory, and I was like, <laughs> um, no, ex no further explanation. And I was like, um, yeah, maybe I can pot potentially see where you're coming from. And then the final book that I wanted to talk about on the long list is another one that I have already read, and that is Glory by No Violet Bulawayo, which was my favourite book on the Booker Prize shortlist last year. Um, so it's another one that I'd be interested in reading. I think I prefer Demon Copperhead, um, but I still really thought Glory was very interesting. It is, um, I mentioned it earlier in this video, but it is set in a fictional African country where everyone is animals, but it is based on Zimbabwean history and the coup that happened against Robert Mugabe and the popular uprising that was taken advantage of by those in power who wanted to get rid of Robert Mugabe but replace him with someone else that was basically the same. Um, and I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the like rhythmic, poetic repetition. I know a lot of people couldn't get on board with why they were animals because they weren't acting like animals but it kind of gave me a chicken little kind of vibe. Like there was much 
that was related to like folklore and myth in that like a, a lot of the animals in Aesop's fables don't like act like animals either they just are animals it allows more of a universality I guess than sticking them in as humans um and I uh, whilst there was whilst I did feel like it was a little overly long at some points and there was part of the story that referred to Zimbabwe's history so it felt like shoehorned in to include that rather than it felt like integral to the story um so I'm hoping both Glory and Demon Copperhead make it to the shortlist because then I only have to read four books if I do indeed end up reading it um but yeah those are my thoughts about the books some of the books on the international booker shortlist and the women's prize shortlist like i said do discuss prize lists with me in the comments down below i'd love to hear your thoughts um are they worth it what do you think are you interested in reading them um do they bring books to your attention that you think deserve it do they feel a bit elitist to you uh i'd love to hear your thoughts so let me know that in the comments down below and i will see you again very soon please do remember to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and to subscribe my instagram is linked in the description as well if you'd like to go and check me out over there and i will see you again very soon i put out my videos twice a week so thank you for watching Bye bye